Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ به تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى والدين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا uh, I seize this opportunity to present to all our viewers the islamic greetings of blessings and that is assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu may the peace and blessings of allah be upon you all i, I congratulate us muslims all over the world on the arrival of the month of ramadan the glorious month of ramadan of this Hijra year 1444 we must congratulate ourselves because the blessings of witnessing Ramadan are immeasurable the blessings of witnessing Ramadan are immense nobody can quantify it so it is a favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and it is his grace upon us that he has spared our lives to witness yet another Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reported in an authentic hadith that is demonstrating the favor and grace of Allah and the blessings of witnessing Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reported in an authentic hadith to have stated in the case of some three persons which one companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw in a dream. He saw three persons who died in a dream two of the persons that died were matired in the battlefield in jihad they were shuhada so to say they were matires they were killed in the battlefield so they were matires he saw them and he saw the third person who, although was not killed in the battlefield, he didn't die as a, mas a matiah. He saw that this last person was raised to a higher level in paradise. And he was surprised. And when he came and reported to the Prophet wasallam, the Prophet wasallam said, didn't he live longer and witness the month of Ramadan? He lived longer than those Matthias and he witnessed another month of Ramadan and he passed in the month of Ramadan 
and he observed prayers in the month of Ramadan. That was the reason for his elevation among them. This in a nutshell demonstrate to us the blessings and the favors of grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a Muslim to witness the month of Ramadan. Once again, I congratulate us that our lives have been spared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to witness the month of Ramadan. It is indeed a great favor of Allah upon us. And again, Alhamdulillah, I bring us glad tidings that in this month of Ramadan, in this year, we shall be presenting to, to the Muslims and even to non-Muslims alike, we shall be making a presentation on a daily basis on a special program which we generally call Ramadan Special Diet. As we are all aware, in the month of Ramadan, there is the need to constantly admonish ourselves about our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but most importantly in the month of Ramadan we should be committed much more to the Quran. So this special Ramadan special diet would specially focus on a study of the Quran. We're going to be undertaking what we call thematic study of the Quran thematic study of the Quran. What is the rationale? Why did we choose the month of Ramadan to undertake this special study of the Quran in this month? It is because there is a relationship. You can say there is a spiritual and organic relationship between Ramadan and the Quran. The month of Ramadan is the month of Quran. So that is why Muslims all over the world are encouraged in the Quran itself and in many hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has encouraged us in many hadith to be much more committed to give more time to the Quran in the month of Ramadan. Because the month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran. It was in Ramadan that the Quran was first revealed. The beginning of revelation was in the month of Ramadan, as Allah said in the Quran in Surah Al Baqarah, where He says, Shahru Ramadan aladhi unzila fihi al Quran huda lil nasi wa bayinati min al huda wal furqan. Faman shahida min kumu shahra fal yasum. Up to the end of the verse, Allah says, "Shahru Ramadan aladhi unzila fihi al Quran." The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. Again, Allah says, "Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al Qadr." Indeed, we revealed the Quran in the night of power. So, even in the month of Ramadan, specifically. The Quran was first revealed. The first revelation began in the night of Laylatul Qadr. That is the night of power, which was referred again in Surah Al Dukhan, where Allah says, Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatim Mubaraka, Inna kunna munzilin. That we revealed the Quran. In the blessed night, this blessed night is the Laylatul Qadr. So there is no doubt that the revelation of the Quran began in the month of Ramadan. So this is what establishes a spiritual relationship or a, an organic relationship between the Quran and the month of Ramadan. That is why Muslims have been encouraged to study the Quran in the month of Ramadan, to be much more committed to the study of the Quran as it happened in the case of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, because it was reported in an authentic hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a generous person, is a generous person, but his generosity multiplies 
in the month of Ramadan, when Angel Jibril usually comes to be reading the Quran together with him. That is to say, in addition to the fact that the, month, the, 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 the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan, spatially were required to give more time to the Quran in the month of Ramadan. And a proof to that, what illustrates that, is the fact that although the Quran is being brought to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by Angel Jibril, it is Angel Jibril that normally brings the Quran uh, to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The quoted in the Zil Arshi Makin, Mutain Thamma Amin. He is the one that is entrusted to be bringing the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But in spite of that, a special time is dedicated. Allah assigns Angel Jibril spatially and specifically to be coming to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on daily basis, every day in the month of Ramadan to be reading the Quran together with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam as Allah says in, in Surah Al-Qiyamah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam should not hasten to be, re, to, to be studying the Quran inna alayna jam'ahu wa qur'ana fa idha qara'anahu fa tabi' qur'ana so the Angel Jibril normally comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the month of Ramadan to be reading the, the, the Quran together with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam as a form of to, further tutelage to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on the Quran in the month of Ramadan. This hadith alone, this hadith alone is sufficient for us to be convinced about the fact that in the month of Ramadan, we need to give more time to Quran. We need to dedicate more time to the Quran. Hence, we can see even right from the Prophet Sallallahu but even among the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu there are among them who make sure that on daily basis, he completes the, the whole Quran, the reading of the whole Quran on daily basis in the month of Ramadan. Some of them used to complete the reading of the Quran, I mean, in every two days, some in every three days, they give their time to the Quran. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was saying that on uh, what this father, this hadith that I'm going to read right now, father establishes that there is a watertight relationship between the Quran and Ramadan. Because the Prophet Sallallahu was saying, the Quran and Ramadan shall intercede on behalf of their companion on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection. The Quran and Ramadan shall intercede on behalf of their companion. Who is their companion? What does it mean by their companion? That is the person who observes the fasting of Ramadan and at the same time is committed to reading the Quran in the month of Ramadan. So we are expected to give more time. The Prophet Sallallahu said, the Ramadan would say, Ramadan would say, O oh Allah, I intercede on behalf of my companion. I denied him his food. I denied him his, uh, his drinks. And I denied him all his selfish, all his desires. O oh Allah, I intercede on his behalf. And the Quran would say, O oh Allah, I denied him his sleep. I denied him his sleep. O oh Allah, I intercede on his behalf. Look at it. The Prophet is saying, the Quran and Ramadan would, shall come together in unison. I mean, together they will intercede on behalf of their companion. The Prophet didn't say the Quran and Salat. He didn't say the Quran and Zakat. 
nor did he say the Quran and Hajj, the other five pillars, but specifically the Quran and Ramadan. This establishes the relationship we have been mentioning, spiritual relationship, organic relationship between the Quran and Ramadan. If there is any reason for why Muslims commit themselves more to the study of the Quran in the month of Ramadan, these are some of the reasons. But the reasons are just too numerous. The ahadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu you know, encourages us to read the Quran, to be more committed to the Quran in the month of Ramadan are, are, are very many. This is what explains why we specifically chose to undertake this study of the Quran in the month of Ramadan. The general you know, name of the program is Ramadan Special Diet. But our own study of the Quran under this Ramadan Special Diet, of course there could be many other things. There may be some other programs that may be conducted by some other people under the general name of Ramadan Special Diet. But in our own case, we will be undertaking a study of the Quran, which, was, which we, have, we have named thematic study of the Quran. What does it mean by thematic study of the Quran? By thematic study of the Quran, it means that we would be identifying important themes in the Quran. We would be identifying important themes in the Quran and we will be specifically study, will specifically study, study them. We will begin with the Quran itself. We shall have as many sessions as possible on the Quran itself under this thematic study of the Quran. But then we will be picking some other themes. For example, Salat and the spiritual significance of Salat, for example, as a theme, the, signific the, the, the socio-economic significance of Zakat. This is a theme. The political and spiritual or the socio-political significance of Hajj, for example, you see, there could be many themes that we will identify. Issues like the position of women in the Quran. This is a theme. Spirituality in the Quran. This is a theme. The concept of God and the concept of unity of God, Tawheed. In the, this is a theme. You see, there could be many things. The Quran and environment. This is a theme. The Quran and human rights. This is a theme. Politics in the perspective of the Quran. This is a theme. Leadership in the Quranic perspective. This is a theme. Social justice and good governance. This is another theme from the perspective of the Quran. So we will be picking up as many themes as possible. We will be studying them in the perspective of the Quran. Hence, we call it thematic study of the Quran. And at this point, I, I wish to uh, stop at this point, which marks the end of uh, the first episode of this, uh, you know, themat thematic study of the Quran. Just as a way of summary, we have only tried to explain why we would study the Quran in this month of Ramadan and why we will be undertaking thematic study of the Quran. Unlike the traditional tafsir that is being conducted and many scholars are conducting tafsir of the Quran, which is chapter by chapter study of the Quran. In our own case, that we will deviate a little bit from this traditional pattern, not for any reason, but because we feel there are very important topics that need to be addressed and the world to be educated about, I mean, from the Quranic perspective. Hence, we adopt this approach of thematic study of the Quran. Now this point I have been making about the need to give more time to the Quran, like we see practically in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu how Angel Jibril comes to him in the month of Ramadan. I would also refer to how the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and their followers, that is those that came after them, used to give time to the Quran in the month of Ramadan. I would wish to use this opportunity, therefore, 
to call on Muslims to individually and collectively give more time to the Quran in the month of Ramadan. I have stated earlier that the way we conduct tafsir of the Quran, especially here in Nigeria, the way tafsir is conducted, tafsir of the Quran is conducted throughout the month of Ramadan is uh, one of the ways in which we dedicate time to, to the Quran in the month of Ramadan. That is very good. Everywhere, in every city, in every town, in every village, wherever you go, all over, especially northern Nigeria and southwestern Nigeria, you will find cycles of tafsirs of the Quran. Some conducted in the morning, others conducted in the afternoon after Zuhur, others conducted after Asr, others conducted after Tarawi, that is in the night. And then even the Salat Tarawi itself, where the Quran is being recited in some in some mas in some masajids, in some mosques, the whole of the Quran is completed in Salat Tarawi. Others do 30 hizbs in Salat Tarawi. Others do less than that. Whatever the case may be, including even those who read only Surah Al-Fil to Surah Al-Nas in, in, in their Tarawi, this is part of the commitment and dedication of time to the Quran in the month of Ramadan. But individually also, we are expected to give more time to the Quran in the month of Ramadan. I wish, I wish to encourage those of our Muslim brothers and sisters who are not able to read the Quran, who cannot read the Quran, that this is an opportunity for them. This month of Ramadan that has come is an opportunity for them to study, to, 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 to begin to learn how to read the Quran. Don't go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without being able to read the Quran. Especially those of, of our Muslim brothers and sisters that have acquired level, some level of Western education. Even if it were a secondary school certificate that you have gotten of Western education, or you have gotten a diploma or an NCE, or you are a graduate, not to talk of those who have acquired masters and PhDs in, in Western education, but they cannot open the Quran and read it in Arabic. That is a great loss in, 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 in life. So let them use this Ramadan time to, to begin to study how to read the Quran. And for those who can barely read it with some difficulty, let them dedicate more time in this month of Ramadan to begin to learn how to perfect their reading of the Quran. Let them correct the mistakes they make, you know, in their reading of the Quran. Just imagine, just imagine when you go back to Allah and you are questioned, Mr. So-so and so. You have acquired a PhD in so so and so. But did were you able to read my book which I revealed? Would you give answer to Allah SWT that oh Allah, I spent my time trying to acquire that PhD. So I couldn't have time to study the Quran? Would you give that answer? Now what about after acquiring the PhD? You still don't have time? I advise our brothers and sisters who are not able to read the Quran in Arabic, that Ramadan has come, put aside all your arrogance, put aside all your pomposity, put aside your status, put aside whatever you think, put aside your business, you will say you are busy, put aside your business, give time to the Quran, don't die before you are able to read the Quran. Because you will be questioned about the Quran in your grave. One of the questions that you will be asked in the, in the grave is about the Quran. 
So you go back, you die, you are not able to read the Quran. You must give time for the Quran. And like I said, those that read it with difficulty, those that read it with difficulty should also dedicate time to perfect their reading. And for those that are able to read, let them give more time. Make sure that at least you complete the Quran in this month of Ramadan if you are not doing it. But if you can make it, make sure you complete the Quran twice in the month of Ramadan or thrice in the month of Ramadan. Those of us that complete, that can complete the reading of the Quran 10 times in this month or even more should please dedicate more time to that. Those of us that are start trying to memorize it, they should not care about completing it from Baqarah to Nas. No, let them dedicate time to perfect their memorization of the Quran. This is, these are different ways in which we are expected to give more time to the Quran. We will talk further about it. Insha'Allah, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.